Well, welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Bergman here, and I want to talk today about what's called the Doppler shift. The Doppler shift has to do with kind of uh, your probably biggest experiences with sound, but uh, of course we're in astronomy class, so we're going to talk about how it affects light, galaxies, and some very interesting things. So that's where we're headed today. So let's get at it. Woo! The Doppler shift detecting motion. So it has to do with motion. So we want to talk about motion and how it affects motion. Okay, so here's a, a graphic of the Doppler shift. You've probably experienced the Doppler shift, okay, is that as a vehicle, let's say a, a vehicle is moving towards you, okay, and the vehicle's making a noise. Let's say he is um, sounding off his horn. Woo! Is that a horn? Okay. And then he gives off sound. We're, we're going to start with sound, sound waves as opposed to light waves. Okay, and so because the car is moving to the right here, as our picture states, and this is you here. Ooh, this is me. Looks like a girl. Oh well. Okay, the sound is compressed, and so the sound has a higher pitch, or we would say a higher frequency. Okay, and then as it goes past you, since it's now moving away from you, it will have a lower pitch, or we say lower frequency. Remember, that's the symbol nu. And so when the car goes past you, it makes a sound. Woo! It kind of goes past you. That Maybe I'll try and find a recording and, and overlap it right here. But to get you an idea of how that sounds, so an object moving towards you has a higher frequency. actually is being produced by the car, okay? A higher pitch, okay? Ooh, that hurt. Okay, <laughs> and when it's moving away from you, maybe it's still honking his horn or holding his horn down, it's going to have a lower pitch, a lower frequency, because it's moving away from you. Does that make sense? So that's the Doppler shift. You should uh, copy down this uh, picture. I think it's very useful. Okay, so if the source of sound is moving, the pitch changes, okay? All right. That's not just true with sound, it's also true with light. Okay, so if you have a light source, okay, so let's, you've got two people here. We've got a, a guy on the left and a guy on the right. And we have a light source. Let's say the light source is um, number, uh, this light bulb right here, and it is moving to the right. Okay, and since it's moving to the right, what's going to happen is from this guy's eye, as he looks, okay, that's his eye, as he looks, the light's going to be longer in wavelength. So a longer wavelength, symbols lambda, right? And they call that a red shift because it's now moving away. And the light, the color of the light will be more blue, we would say, because it will be shorter to the person who it's being approached to. So if light is moving away from you, you get a longer wavelength. We call that a red shift because red light has a, um, has a longer wavelength. It's the longest wavelength in terms of uh, the visible spectrum. And a blue shift is because it's coming towards you. Okay? So does that make sense? Okay, a couple of texts here. So if the source of light is set in motion relative to an observer, its spectral lines, remember the spectral lines we just talked about, previous podcast, shift to new wavelengths in a similar way. So that's kind of, it's uh, the same uh, uh, shift that we talked about. Now, of course, uh, there, the wavelengths change, so we can actually, um, oh yeah, I want to talk before I'm, I was getting ahead of myself. Okay, let's talk about this. So an observed increase in wavelength is called the red shift. I think I already said that, so this is probably redundant. And a decrease in the observed wavelength is called a blue shift, regardless of whether or not the waves are visible. By the way, this, this assumes they're visible, but sometimes, of course, we've learned that there are other kinds of light besides the things you can see with your eyes. There are, there's lights, ultraviolet, infrared, x-rays, and such that we can see, but we can watch their spectral lines, like on a graph, as opposed to, you know, actually visibly seeing them. Okay, so we can see the red shift or the blue shift, or just basically it tells you if it's moving away, Away is a red shift, and or towards you, blue shift. Okay. Um, it helps us determine the velocity of an object. Now that leads us to what's called the Doppler shift equation. So it's a mathematical thing. We can actually calculate how fast the galaxy is moving away, or what the pitch is, or something like that. So here is the equation: delta f over f is equal to v over v w. Now you may not have seen this symbol delta before. 
All right. What does the delta symbol mean? Delta by whenever you see delta in science, that means a change in something. Okay, so the change in, see change in, in this case F, and F stands for frequency. So the change in frequency divided by the frequency, where frequency is the frequency of the sound or the light, is equal to the velocity of the moving object divided by the speed of the wave, or the velocity of the wave. Okay? So, let's see if we can do a problem like that. So, we have a train. Actually, what do you probably need to do? That's right! Get out your calculator! You need your calculator. Actually, I need to pause and get my calculator out. So, a train. It's approaching at 40 meters per second. And the whistle's frequency is 500 hertz. What is the frequency heard by the person at the train? Actually, I meant to say at the train station. Or by just by the person. Okay, well, so let's look at our equation. First thing you want to do is copy down the equation. So it's delta F over F. So delta F over F is equal to V over VW. That's not too bad, is it? Okay, so what does each thing represent? The change in the frequency. I'm asking what is the frequency. Okay, so we're actually going to try and find delta F. Okay, so I'm going to say delta F over the frequency. Well, the sound being produced by this particular train whistle is 500 hertz. So I'll say 500 hertz. I'm just going to plug in what I know. Is equal to the velocity, the train is moving at 40 meters per second, divided by the speed of the wave. Now what wave do we have right here? Well, the wave we had is sound, and sound travels at 341 meters per second. Now we have a bit of a, a conundrum here, as this does not solve for delta F, we actually have to do some cross multiplication. So what I want to do, here's change colors here, let's change to blue, I like a blue. If you multiply two equivalent fractions, you can cross multiply, they are equivalent. So I can say delta F times 341 is equal to 500 times 40. Okay. So, I can say 341 delta F is equal to, now let's get the calculator going over here, 500 times 40. 5 times 4 is 220, so this is 20,000. So this is 20,000. Now, algebra tells me I need to divide both sides by 341, right? The 341 cancels. So now I take the 20,000. I can just push the divide button because that remembers my last thing. Divided by 341 equals. And I get 59, let's call that. So I get 59 hertz. Now, this is an important point. This is the change in frequency. So now it's coming towards you or away from you. So in this case, the, uh, the, the train is coming towards you. So it's going to make the frequency higher pitched, right? A higher frequency, right? Yeah. It's going to make a higher frequency. So we need to take this number, the change, and we need to add it to the 500. So 500 plus 59 is 559 hertz. I don't need a calculator for that. Okay? Whoa. What did I just do? I just made my calculator really big. What did I do? Okay. I will self into the side. So that's 559 hertz, okay? That's the answer. Now, if it had been moving away from me, we would have subtracted the 59 hertz. So that's important. Okay, now let's do one more problem, okay? All right, what's going on? Oh, I got to, I've got to actually advance the slide.